Praise the Lord, everyone. The let's Lord. stand to our feet and let's clap our hands and give the Lord some praise today. Come on, everybody, give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Good to see each and every one of you here this morning. You can be seated. We're going to go through the announcements before we begin with prayer. Again, as always, uh, the QR code can be scanned, and you can scan it on the live stream or however other options you would like to pull up announcements. We're about to update it for the new month's announcements. As all, also, prayer meeting every Tuesday night. So this Tuesday night at 7.30, there will be prayer here at the church. Uh, first Tuesday of the month is our youth prayer. October is others first October. Today, we're bringing in baby supplies. So we've already have some in here this morning. But remember, baby supplies between now and and Sunday and please bring some of those today Wednesday night this afternoon let's get those to the house of the Lord if you look over here to my left we've not put them up yet but we had some uh, these were the things we brought in for last week thank you guys that is uh, tremendous to put up in store throughout the year as we have people that have traumatic uh, issues or things that happen in their life and they are in need of some help we can help take care of them also, we had food pantry yesterday, had a tremendous day. We had a tremendous work day here at the church, too. Got a lot done. If you were here yesterday, I give you a hand clap of appreciation. If you were not, I don't give you one. Amen. Shame on you. Amen. But we had a great time. We got a tremendous amount of work accomplished. We do have some bags of groceries left over. Okay? We have some good stuff left over. There's... There's milk that's in the fridge, there's meat, there's frozen vegetables, there's also canned goods and, and uh, toiletry supplies. Uh, you can see Sister Bean, Sister Myra, Sister uh, Debbie. Debbie. I was trying, my brain went blank. I was going to call you somebody else's name, but I settled on, settled on the right one. So um, you can see them after church. Please make sure you pick up some of that, uh, those things. And I it, listen, we... We don't want to throw it away, and we don't want it to go bad. So you don't, you're not admitting that you, you, you're, you're poor or that you don't have anything by asking or taking. It's, it's a blessing of God at this point, okay? We've blessed, right? We've blessed, and now there's some left over. And if we serve God, there's always a blessing enough for everybody, amen? Also, Thursday night is our Acts program at 7 p.m., here at the church, I'm excited about what God is going to do. If you know someone that needs to be here, let them know about it before Thursday night. Share the post when we put it out on, on social media. Tell somebody. Invite them. See that they can get here to church. Also, today is All Nations Sunday. Our young people have worked really hard to prepare uh, something in the foyer from countries all over the world. When we dismiss today, in the foyer, you're going to walk out. You can participate. You can go to every table, learn about different countries, learn about missionaries that are there. Um, again, they've been working on this for a couple weeks. Today's their big culmination. Support the young people today. Also, music practice uh, is Saturday, the 29th, 10 a.m., singers at 11. And then Brother uh, John and Sister Angie's wedding will be that afternoon at 2 p.m. here at the church. Everyone is invited. Fall Festival, October the 30th at 6 p.m. Trunks are needed. Uh, see, Sister Danielle, uh, we have a lot of people signed up. And we do need, I think, more trunks. So make sure you sign up to, to decorate a trunk. And then Youth Week is November the 11th and 12th. I've heard some of the plans, and I know it's going to be awesome for our young people. It's going to be a great thing. Volunteers are always needed here at the church. We also live stream to Facebook, upload, uh, recorded to YouTube. And if you'd like to do online giving, we have Givelify, but you can also give here in the offering basket. Uh, if you'd like to give that way, that is perfectly, perfectly, perfectly fine. If we could this morning, let's stand to our feet. We're getting ready to go to the Lord in prayer and begin the service today. Amen. As Sister Brewer makes her way up this morning, we're going to get ready to go to the Lord in prayer. But today is the day of salvation. Amen. God's going to touch somebody today. God's going to deliver somebody. I believe somebody can pray through to the Holy Ghost today. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord some praise right now. Amen. Sister Brewer, you grab that mic and lead us in prayer today. I need this microphone because <clears throat> I'm hoarse. 
Y'all, I heard a story this week that it really touched my heart. And it was a young man that had been in a car wreck. And they called his mother and told him that they didn't expect him to make it. And he laid there and he said, Mama, I'm not sure if I'm going to go to heaven. And she said, why, son, why? You've been saved and everything. What makes you feel that way? And he said, I don't know. I just, I'm just, you know, rechecking myself. I'm not sure. So she prayed with him, prayed with him. And he laid there and she said, pretty soon his hand went like this. And she said, what you doing, son? He said, Mama, I know I'm saved. She says, what was the change? He said, because Jesus has a hold of my hand. Jesus has a hold of your hand. Everybody that's in this building under the sound of my voice, he loves you with all of his heart. Amen. He died for you. I'm so thankful he died for me even though I didn't deserve it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for keeping me, Lord, even whenever I was so bad. Give Jesus some praise, Lord. He wants you to come to him today. Oh, Jesus, we would just ask that your spirit would fall out on each person today. If their heart is not right, Lord, just lead them to an altar. Don't let anyone leave this building today lost. Help us to search our own hearts, Lord, and make sure that we're right with you. Life is so short, it's like a vapor. It's here for a little while, but it's gone. Help us, God, to get our hearts right with you. Lord, we welcome your spirit into this place. Lord, I welcome your spirit into this place, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be obedient and open to your spirit, Lord. Help us, God, to do what you would have us to do this morning, which is to praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Love you, Lord.
just sing God some worship this morning hallelujah Lord we worship you in this place today God hallelujah Lord we worship you Jesus hallelujah good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you.
morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are good all the time, all the time. You are good, King of kings, Lord of lords, Prince of peace, mighty God. You are good all the time. You are good, King of kings, Lord of lords, Prince of peace, mighty God. You are good all the time, all the time. You are good, King of kings, Lord of lords, Prince of peace, mighty God. We worship you. Hallelujah. to generation we worship you hallelujah hallelujah we worship you for who you are we worship you hallelujah hallelujah we worship you for who you are Hallelujah. Come on, let's clap our hands. Who knows we serve a God who is awesome this morning? Who knows God has been good to you this morning? Hallelujah, Lord, we praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Who feels something in the sanctuary this morning? Come on, give God a shout of praise this morning. Hallelujah, Lord, we magnify you, Jesus. Lord, we worship you, God. We exalt your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship you, Jesus.
all power in his hand. The lamb that was slain, he's alive. Forever he shall reign, he's alive. They crucified him, Calvary, but he rose in victory. He's alive. Somebody step out of your aisle and just worship God this morning. Hallelujah. Who feels the presence of God in this place? Come on, I wonder if we could just step out and worship God for a minute. Because he's alive and he died for mine and your sins. And he is alive today to reach each and every one of us, all the sinners that are lost this morning. Anybody who has an issue in their life, God is here to meet your needs this morning. And he has all power in his hands, all power of heaven and earth. Just call on the name of Jesus this morning, and God will meet you in your spot. God will meet you where you stand this morning. He has all power in his hands. He rose in glory with all power and authority this morning. He conquered your enemies. Hallelujah, Lord, we worship you, Jesus. He rose in glory with all power. Authority. He conquered my enemies. He put them under my feet. He rose in glory with all power and authority. He conquered my enemies. He put them under my feet. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Come on, let's clap our hands to God this morning. Who knows that we serve a God who's alive and well this morning? Hallelujah, Lord, we magnify you, Jesus. Who knows the God we serve's name is Jesus this morning? I wonder if all across this house we could just call on the name of Jesus right now. Hallelujah, Jesus, Lord, we come before you today, God. Lord, we have needs, God. We're not perfect. Lord, we ask that you meet us here in this place in our needs this morning, God. We ask that you come and meet us in this place today. God, we humbly come before you this morning. God, we ask that you just unleash your anointing on this place this morning. I wonder if somebody's got a need and they can feel the presence of God moving this morning. We come up to the altars for just a moment and just begin to give God some praise and begin to call on the name of Jesus. There's somebody here, you can feel it, and you may be discouraged, you may feel like you don't want to come up here, but you feel the anointing of God in this place this morning. If that's you, I beg you to come to this altar and reach your hands to heaven and just begin to call on the name of Jesus. You can't tell me you're a Holy Ghost-filled Christian when we're singing this song. You don't feel something in your spirit wanting to cry out to God this morning. Even if you don't have a need, I wonder if you would just stretch your hand out and just begin to call on the name of Jesus this morning. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. All power in his hands. And he rose in glory with all power. 
power and authority. He conquered my enemy. He put them under my feet. He rose in glory with all power and authority. He conquered my enemy. He put them under our feet today. Under my feet. He rose in glory with all power and authority. He conquered my enemy. He put them under my feet. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. With all power in his hand. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. All power in his hand. He's alive. Come on, worship God this morning. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. All power in his hand. And he rose. He rose in glory. In glory. With all power. All power. For it's he conquered. conquered by enemy. He put them. And put them under my feet. He rose. He rose in glory. In glory. With all power. All Let worship arise and praise God this morning. Come on, let's just let worship arise in the sanctuary this morning. Hallelujah, Lord, we praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, we glorify you, Jesus. Lord, hallelujah. Come on, let's just continue to worship in this place. God is doing something in this place, and you can feel it. Hallelujah, Lord, we worship you, Jesus. God, we praise your name. Hallelujah. Come on, just continue to call on the name of Jesus. Lord, we worship you, God. Lord, we praise your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we worship you, God. Lord, we praise your name, Jesus. Lord, hallelujah, Lord, we magnify you. Just begin to call out to Jesus this morning. No place I'd rather be than here in your love, here in your love. No place I'd rather be, no place I'd rather be, no place I'd rather be than here in your love. There's so many places we could be this morning, but we're here in the sanctuary in God's presence. No place I'd rather be, no place I'd rather be. You want more of it today? at the right time in your life, where would you no be this morning? Come on, just reach your hands up and just tell no God there's no place I would rather be today, God.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Brother, if you could put me in the blue monitor. Yeah. Thank you, sir. It's good to be in the house of the Lord here this morning. How many of you have felt the, the Spirit of God here in the house? Amen. Why don't we just clap our hands to the Lord? Amen. I'm so thankful this morning to see each and every one of you here. I'm thankful uh, for our young people that rode the church band this morning. Wave at them. Amen. So glad to have them. They were here Wednesday night. We've, we've been picking up a good van full on Wednesday night. We, before you leave here today, I want as many people to shake their hands, introduce themselves uh, to that brother and sister. And I think, where's Nevaeh? She says here. There you are, Nevaeh. Amen. Make sure you greet these children. They are as much a part of our church family as anybody. Amen. All right. Well, this morning, um, you know, Everybody does different. Everybody really does different. But the Lord gave me something to preach this morning. And he, he gave it to me, Sister Brewer, when I was on the phone talking to you last night, just like he, he spoke something. And so uh, I'm going to take everybody to 1 Kings, the 19th chapter. 1 Kings. And Brother, Brother Crowder, you, you referenced this story uh, Wednesday night, I think. You hit on it just a little bit. And uh, so we're going to start there. 1 Kings 19 and 19. We're going to read verse 20 and 21 as well. And again, you stand to give honor for the reading of the word of God this morning. Not for me, but it's God's word, so we, we give honor to that. It says, so he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him, and he with the 12th, and Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. The mantle uh, was a garment, a uh, cloak that was worn by the prophets of God. And it, rep it was their covering. It represents them being covered by the anointing of, of, of the ministry. And so it represented the things of God. And he left the oxen. And he ran after Elijah. So he chased the prophet. And he said, let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and mother, and then I'll follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again, for what have I done to thee? And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh and the instruments of the oxen and gave unto the people, and they did eat. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. Amen. I'm going to be preaching a sermon this morning. Uh, many of you have heard me preach a sermon under this title. It's not the same sermon, but the same premise, so to speak. Uh, called No Plan B. No Plan B. And I preached this before. You can be seated. Uh, I preached uh, the premise of this sermon several years ago. Several years ago. Um, and, and I'm preaching, again, the same premise, but different, uh, some different things I'm going to bring out and different texts all together. Uh, at the time when I preached the sermon, I was preaching at a church locally uh, and I'm just going to be honest, they were a so-called apostolic church. Um, and and I, many came from our church here. And the young people are going to get their stuff ready, so you can excuse them. They're, they're not walking out on me this morning. They're getting ready for All Nations Sunday. Um, when I preached this sermon, uh, there was a lot of the people from the church that went with me and supported me. When I preached for them. Uh, and I preached this sermon. It was called No Plan B. And I had said that the church that I preached this in was a so-called apostolic church. Because if you were to see them now, you would not know they were apostolic in any form of doctrine. That's for that church and that pastor to answer to God for. And that's really not my concern. My concern is here and what I'm about to tell you. That night was less than 10 years ago. And there are many of you here today that were there with me then. But there are some that are no longer with the faith. Think about that. 
there are some that are no longer in the faith. Did they die? Nope. Are they dead? They pass away? No. As long as, as far as I know, I think they're all still living. But many have walked away from truth. It is my prayer that 10 years from now, 10 years from today, that unless you are with the Lord, that I'll see you in this church. Not only you, but I want to see your children in the church. I want to see your spouse in the church. I want to see some of your friends and your neighbors and your loved ones also in the church. Amen? Amen? I want to see souls lined up ready for the king. Elisha had already been called of God when the Lord spoke his name to Elijah. You see, Elisha was called of God before he knew he was called of God. Because it, the, the Lord spoke to Elijah and said, you're going you're gonna to anoint Jehu to go overthrow this king, and you're going to go cast your mantle and anoint Elisha to be the prophet in your stead. He's going to be your successor, your replacement when you're gone. And when he was found, when he was found by Elijah, he was found plowing a field with 12 yoke of oxen. I mean, he was working. He had, he had a life. He had a job. He had things going on. I'm going to tell you this. If you're going to live for God and you're going to serve God, you're going to have to lose your life. You're going to have to change your priorities. Your job may have to change if you're going to live for God. I, we're not liking this yet. You may have to change how you think you're supposed to live your life if you're going to serve God the way he's calling you to serve him. He had already been called, but he was not yet qualified because he was still plowing in the fields of yesterday. He had this job, he had a life, he had a family, he had a good lifestyle. In those days, you got 12 yoga oxen, you're not poor. He had substance. He had things going on. He had a solid family. He had a home life. He had security. He had things going the way he wanted them to go. But when the Lord called him to follow him, something had to change. It moved him when God spoke to him. It changed something inside of him when that mantle of God was cast upon him. He was cast upon that mantle by the man of God, by the prophet. Everybody knew what that meant. When the man of God was take his mantle off and do something with it, things happen. Whenever that mantle was cast, something happened. When something that represents the power of God goes forward, something happened. When the mantle of God was thrown upon the shoulders of Elisha, he knew that he had an opportunity that other people may not ever get. He ran after that prophet. And he, he said, I want to follow you. I want to go with you. It touched me in a way that those oxen in that field never have touched me. And so he said, I will follow you. How many of us sitting here in this church today are guilty of refusing to tell the Lord, I will completely follow you? We come to church. But we don't follow many times. He, brother, he only had one request to the man of God. And, and, and pardon me, I'm going to paraphrase, okay? I'm going to paraphrase. I'm going to put it in, in the language we speak today. He said, I've got a few loose ends I've got to go tie up. And then I'll be on my way. Is that okay? Is that okay? I, I, we can quote it from 1 Kings, but I just put it the way we all understand it. He said, I've got some things back home that I need to handle. And then I'm coming. Many today, when they preach a beautiful sermon, would criticize Elisha for what he did. 
because he wanted to go back, because he wanted to kiss father and mother goodbye. But I think it's important to see what he was doing really. Not only did he kiss goodbye father and mother and he said goodbye to the life, he destroyed the oxen and the yoke that he worked by. He built a fire, he killed the beast, he destroyed the implements. And he burned them before the Lord, fed everybody, and he caught up with the prophet. The rest is history. The rest of the story is Elisha got a double portion. The rest of the story is eight miracles by Elijah, 16 by Elisha. The rest of the story is Elijah parted the waters, and when Elisha come back, so did he. Hear what I'm saying? There is another side to the story beside he had to say bye to something. The other side of the story is he stepped into an anointing and a walk with, and relationship with God like nobody had ever seen before. How many of you are ready to let go of something so you can have a walk with God that you've never seen before? You see, we get excited, but we don't like doing it. We don't like to go back home, and we don't like to kill the calf. We don't like to destroy the plow, and we don't like to say goodbye to yesterday. Elisha said goodbye to everything that would distract him. Sometimes your mother and your father are going to distract you from serving God. Sometimes your brother, sometimes your sister will stop you from serving God according to how it's written. Sometimes aunts and uncle will distract you from serving God according to how it's written. Why do you say that? Because the Bible says, at, according to as it is written, have I believed and I've spoken. If they come to you any other way and you listen to them and it's not this way, it's a distraction. It's a curse. It's a false doctrine. It's a false belief. You've got to stand upon what you know will never fail. He said goodbye to father. He said goodbye to mother. He destroyed his contingency plan. And by three of you with me this morning, he burned every bridge he could go back over. He destroyed every door that he could go back through to get back home. He destroyed every secondary option, every contingency, and every plan B he destroyed. Do not convince yourself this morning that you have it all together and Satan can never get you. Now, as long as you stay in the will of God as long as you keep that spirit right, as long as you guard yourself, as long as you're wearing the armor of God, you're fine. There's a path that no foul knows. Amen. As long as you stay on that highway of holiness, as long as you're covered. But when you get out from under that, I bet if we had an evangelist preaching the same sermon, we'd be running aisles right now. We've already ran. We're tired, sister. We need to dismiss. We've only got like a few minutes. That's it. This, this is where we live. Satan, all he's got to do to get your number. Remember, what does, the, what does the, the lion that runs to and fro, what does he want? He wants flesh. As long as carnality has a place in your life, he's got something to feed on. Let's go to the Bible. As long as you've got a backup plan, he's got a right to you. As long as you've got a secondary plan, the devil has got a way to get in your life. Luke 22, it says, the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I prayed for you, that thy faith fail not. Listen to this, everybody. See, you got to make sure you get in the Holy Ghost and you're in the Spirit. Because just because you talk some Christian talk that you believe is not enough. Because let me tell you something. At that moment, Peter was not converted. I got Bible. Let's keep reading. He said, after. 
after thou, when thou art converted, once you get saved, once you get your heart right, once you get filled with the Holy Ghost, once you are born again, once you are a new creature, then strengthen thy brethren. Be careful. If Simon Peter can fall, we can fall. If the apostle can fall. The Bible says if the very elect are saved, what then for the unjust? Somebody hear what I'm preaching this morning. Even Peter was vulnerable. What do you mean? He could go back to fishing anytime he wanted. He had a boat. He had the nets. He had the business partner. He could just turn back, go do into what he used to do. Remember, every time things got rough, Peter had an option. People came to get Jesus. What did he do? He struck a man with a sword. He had a plan B. Remember when everybody was turning against Jesus and he was outside of the hall, what happened? He began to curse him. He began to curse the people from Galilee. I'm not with those people. Why? Because he had a second plan. He had a backup plan. If you've got a backup plan to go to when things get uncomfortable in your life spiritually, you'll die lost. Let me just say it that. As long as you've got another way to go down, the Bible says there is a way which seemeth right to a man. As long as that's one of your ways, as long as that's an option, you won't make it. You've got to walk the way. You have got to walk a way that is narrow, but it is straight. You've got to walk a way that has been ordained by God. Luke chapter 9 verse 57. And it came to pass that as they went, in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. How many of you have ever said, Jesus, I'll follow you? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Y'all don't know it, but they somebody left the church this morning and backslid. There will be people that will follow Jesus no matter what until they quit following him. No matter what, until they don't. Until something else appeases. Until something else pimps. Until something else looks a little better. I'll go wherever you want me to go. Jesus said, foxes have holes. Birds have nests. Sounds like a biology. But the Son of Man hath not a where to lay his head. He said unto him, follow me. Jesus ain't going to turn anybody away. So every time you read scripture, what does he say? Follow me. Come unto me. Come and dine. Come on. Follow me. But the man said, but first, let me suffer. Allow me to go bury my father. Now that, that seems harmless, right? That seems, that seems harmless. Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury the dead. But go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said unto him, Lord, I'll follow thee. But let me first go bid them farewell which are at home at my house. Jesus said unto him, no man having put his hand to the plow. Now we don't like to preach this today because we love a gospel that is so easy and appeasing and nobody's going to hell. Jesus said, if you put your hand to the plow, and look back. No man that does it is fit for the kingdom. That's not an easy doctrine to swallow, church. That's not an easy thing to live with. That's not an easy thing to, to, to preach. Because how many of us are guilty? There are some people who live in the deadness. Of sin. There are some people, their priorities and their agenda will destroy you. They don't have the same goals you do, they don't have the same love that you do. Their agenda is not yours. Even your loved ones. Even your loved ones 
will try to pull you out of this way. Why? I got Bible for that. Romans 8 and 7. Romans 8 and 7. It says that the carnal mind is enmity against God. Against God. Carnality is against God. Now, if you don't know what enmity means, it, it's more than just against. It is hostile toward. It's hostility towards God. Carnality is hostility to God. If you have loved ones that are carnal, they're not living for God, they're not where they need to be, they will always be hostile in their spirit towards the things of God. They will always. That's hard to digest. Because you can love somebody that does not love the God inside of you. You may ask yourself, well then what's the difference between what Elisha did and what these two people wanted to do with Jesus? Because there is a difference. Elisha went back and destroyed every connection and every responsibility and every tie he had to his old life so that at no point while he's doing the work of God could anything from his past leverage him from what God had in store for him. He destroyed every tie, every connection, every relationship he said goodbye to. He wasn't ugly. He kissed him goodbye. But he said, I've got, I've got to go. I have something bigger that God has in store for me. There's something more God wants from me. The other people, they wanted to maintain an emotional connection to their past. The other people wanted to maintain an emotional relationship with their past. Be careful what you do that you connect your heart to. Because the Bible tells you it's deceitful. The member you have. It is a deceitful member your heart is. Be careful what you let your heart stay in love with. This is heavy this morning. A man that followed Jesus kept an emotional attachment to his carnal past. Jesus knew that if he went back. No, you know, well, how do you know? Let me, can, we, can we just for a moment understand that Jesus was all-knowing? Can for a moment we just realize that Jesus knew the man's heart? Jesus knew that if he went back, there'd be no coming back to him. Jesus knew that if he went back to where he had come from, where he had brought him from, he wasn't going back to the bar uh, to tell him, hey, buddy, close my tab. I don't want to owe you no more money. He knew that if he went back to his old lifestyle, he would never come out of it again. There are people that if you walk back to your old lifestyle, you won't make it back to God. John chapter 6 and verse 66, it says, From that time many disciples went back, and they walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve. Stand with me this morning. Jesus turned to his disciples, the ones he handpicked, the twelve. The ones that were closest to him. He said, will ye also go away? Now, Simon Peter, he made mistakes. He made some mistakes. But there was one thing he learned how to do. He learned how to bury the past. He did learn how to do it. He said something right here that really speaks. He said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. I'm asking you today to make up your mind. Today, if this way is the right way. Is that all right? You see, we all carry around a plan A. 
I spelled it right. I checked. Everybody's got a, notice in parentheses, I got our Jesus plan in parentheses. We've all got this plan. We all wear this one on Facebook, except when somebody makes us mad or Alabama loses or, or whenever our neighbor like does something wrong or whenever we had bad service at a restaurant. Then we put this one up for just a little bit. But most of the time, our Jesus plan, we keep it right here. Come on, don't we? We all got the Jesus plan. I'm going to love Jesus. I'm going to go to church Sunday if the Lord will. And I'm gonna, come on, guys, don't say that. Y'all know it's the Lord's will for you to go to church. That's, that's ridiculous. I'm going to get baptized if it's the Lord's will. Well, I guess you're going to get in today then because it's his will today is the day of salvation. But we all got this plan A, right? We all, we all plan on living for God. We all plan on going to heaven. Who in here? Raise your hand. If anybody plan on going to hell? So put that hand down, yeah. Anybody just plan on going to live with the devil for eternity? Anybody? Brother Barry, my job is done. Nobody plans on going to hell. Nobody plans on backslide. Nobody plans on living for the world. We all plan to love Jesus. Don't we? But you know what we also have? We, a lot of us have one of these in our pocket. We all sometimes carry one of these. I spelled it right too. Wouldn't that be awful? We all sometimes carry a backup plan. I'm going to go to church. Unless I'm, I meet somebody, and they don't want to go to church, well, I won't go then. Like if I meet somebody special. I was talking to somebody yesterday. Try to keep it. They're not here. They're not a member of the church. Man, I like Columbiana, they said. Person's divorced. Wasn't, wasn't their fault. Never is. Never is. I like this area. Are there any single women around here? I, I guess. Yeah. I said, but let me help you. I, don't make a plan to move here because you think you're going to find a woman here. I said, at your age and all you got going on, why you want another wife? Well, you know, the Bible says it's good, not good for a man to be alone. I said, it also says it's good for a man to have, be the husband of one wife. I mean, I also it says, Paul said, it's good that you were all like me. So, sometimes we, we, got, we got a plan A. We want to live for God unless something don't work in the plan the way we think it should work, and then we'll go to the plan B. You know, plan B says backslide. And then, you know, I have those friends that they still do that, and, and you know, I'm popular with them always. I'm going to ask you, either baptism in Jesus' name is the right way or it's not. There's about four of you still got to play. Either baptism in Jesus' name is right or it's not. Either it's Bible or it's not. Come on, somebody. Either holiness is essential and righteousness and walking with God is essential because God said it or it's not. Say it again. Say it again. No gray. But I heard about all them Christians watching that movie about Fifty Shades of it. They weren't supposed to do that word. No gray. No gray. Say it again, sister. No gray. You know, I got a call from Brother Ty the other day. Sister, come help me play something. I, I, need, I, need, a, I need a plan B to get out of here. Brother Ty called me up the other day. And listen, we're about to have something awesome. We're about to have something awesome. How many of you know in the Bible, Elisha called fire down from heaven? I'm about to call some fire down in just a second, too. You think I'm kidding? You're going to see fire. Brother Ty called me the other day. He said, I am so excited. He said, I'm reading my Bible. He said, Word. How many of you read your Bible at work? Don't lie. Don't start that now. As your plan B coming out of your Bible. He said, I've been reading my Bible. 
And he said, I just got to the book of John. He said, now we, we have a, a mutual acquaintance uh, that come to him and said, oneness. Y'all are one God? He said, oh, you better get out of that, brother. Now, Brother Ty believed it. He just hadn't been in it long enough to fully make the argument all, all by himself. And, and he said, I, I believe it and I understand it. He said, I just, I, I was just kicking myself because I just didn't have all the, the notes to defend it. And he said, and the guy come up to me? And he said, well, brother, I challenge you to go read the Gospels. You'll understand the Trinity when you read the Gospels. He said, well, I believed in the oneness of God. He said, but I figured I'd just keep reading. Either God was going to let me see the oneness or he showed me if I was wrong. He called me up. He said, I seen it there in writing. Every question I had, he said, I got to John chapter 1. He said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the same was in the beginning with God. Brother Ty, he said, you know, I kept reading, he said, and then it said that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and they didn't know Him. Brother Ty, either there's one God, and He has been revealed to us in Jesus, or there's not one. Let me do it again. Either there's one God, and he, and he is the mighty God, and Christ, or there's no God. You better make up your mind today where you stand. Either separation from sin is essential, or it's not. Make up your mind. Come on, somebody. Either the Bible is right, or it's not. Make up your mind. Either the church is true or it is not. I am sick and tired of Christians telling me they miss the old time way and they're not willing to tarry. Don't clap. Don't clap if I don't see you at prayer meeting Tuesday night. I'm sick of Christians telling me we're sorry we don't have the anointing we used to and you won't seek the Lord. I'm tired of hearing people say that they're, they're sorry that the Holy Ghost don't fall. I'm sorry that you won't yield to the Lord because I have felt Him. I have been moved by the power of God. Don't tell me that you like the old time way if you ain't willing to pay the price to get it. What are you going to do with your plan B? Come on, some of you got one. Pull it out of your spirit this morning. Where's your plan B at? What is it? Is it your job? A relationship? The way you dress? What's your fallback if it don't? What are you going to sell out to? What's your plan B? I told you it was going to call fire down from heaven. Let me tell you, Elisha went back. I may need some help holding this. Brother, come help me. We burned the carpet up. You know, it's had 15 good years, so. Look, Elisha went back. He destroyed yesterday. Broke the, broke the plow. Broke the yoke. Killed the ox. Now, they had a good meal. But let me tell you also what he did. That was an offering to God. That was an offering to God. What backup plan do you have this morning that if you'll take it and burn it, I hope we don't burn a church down. What backup plan do you have? What backup plan do you have? What backup plan do you have? It ain't going to burn me, I don't think. What backup plan do you have this morning? What do you have that you don't want to let go of? It's hot. What, what, what do you have? If you'll just give it to God, it becomes an offering. Sister, it'll become an offering. Is it doctrine? You got some old doctrine of, 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 of false teaching in you and the world? You got some old thoughts in there that aren't good? If you'll just surrender your mind to God, it's an offering. You still want to look like the world? Just give it in an offering. Burn it. Get rid of that plan B. Burn it as an offering to God. We don't have enough time left to mess around. There's not enough time left to vacillate between God and the world. Not enough time. 
Two people this week have called our house and said they've been under spiritual attack. One after, both of them after they moved and were obedient to the Holy Ghost in a matter immediately. Both of them had spiritual attacks. And one called my wife, the other called me. One on Thursday, one on Friday. The enemy will pull both of these people. You were in the wrong. Nobody believes that. You're not worthy. Nobody, nobody believes you're, you're, you're for real. Nobody loves you. God's not blessing you. You shouldn't even go to church. That was said by the Spirit into their mind. No plan B. As she sings, I want to open these altars for some folks in this house that need to add an altar. Burn a fire. Lay on it your backup plan to go back. Lay on it your plan to go back to the world right now. There are some saints of God in here that need a fresh fire. You get it from an altar. There are some people in here that you want the Lord to take you in a higher dimension spiritually. That you want restoration for your life. Why are you not running to an altar today? Why are you not in an altar? Why are you not seeking? Because the altar is there. The fire is burning. Lay the plans of the world down. Lay the oxen. Lay the plow. Lay the yoke down. Lay aside every, Jesus said it. Lay aside every yoke of sin. Lay it down. Burn the plan of yesterday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, you're worthy, Lord, of everything I could offer in this altar. Every prayer I could raise up. Every offering, every sacrifice of praise, Jesus. If you're here today, if you need joy, if you need strength, if you need encouragement. This better be your only plan. This better be your only option. This better be your only choice. No plan B, no way out, no giving up, no throwing in the towel, no turning back, no letting go, no letting go. I won't go back, I can't go back. I won't turn around, I won't give in, I won't give up, I won't surrender. I'm holding on to everything I have in Jesus.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I really feel, don't stop praying. Whatever you do, if you're praying for them, pray over me if you have to. I really feel like God is wanting to encourage in the Holy Ghost somebody today that you just need a fresh anointing. You just need a fresh anointing. And it may be somebody that's apprehensive about coming to the front. Maybe you're nervous. Maybe you don't know anybody. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you don't want nobody to know you need it. What I want us to do right now, I want us to spend about 30 seconds. Now, I'm going to pray that if the Lord will lay somebody on your heart, I, we're going to move around as we sing and worship. We can keep our eyes closed. If the Lord lays somebody on your heart, I want you to move over there, and I want you to begin to pray for them. If it's appropriate, if it's appropriate, don't do anything inappropriate. Don't, don't, don't try to give no word in the Holy Ghost if it ain't from God. But pray, pray. Right now, we're going to pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that you'd lay a soul upon somebody's heart. God, I pray right now that you would begin to move on our hearts and minds. God, that we would be receptive to the Spirit as you lead us. Lord, that we could step out in faith and we could lay hands on the sick. That we could lay hands on those that are in bondage. Lord, they'd be released. That they'd be encouraged. That people be received the Holy Ghost by the laying on of hands in the, according to Scripture. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Sisters, lead us in this course. We're getting ready to dismiss. But I feel like God wants to touch one more individual before we walk out of this place. If the Lord has laid somebody on your heart, I want you to move in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I've been I have way. What they're going through, and that's okay. You just pray in the Holy Ghost. I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be. Before your presence, Lord, I want a fresh anointing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I won't go back. I can't go back. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, begin to let your spirit fall. Begin to let encouragement fall, God. Lord, we give you praise, Jesus. Before your presence came and changed me. Hey, Amen. I seen, I seen one walk across this. You may have been the one. You might have been the one that God was pulling and moving. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't we lift our hands and just love God with all of our might? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. At this time, here's what we're going to do. We're about to receive the offering. As you bring your offering up, you're going to be dismissed to go into the foyer. Okay? The children have set up these tables of countries all over the world for All Nations Sunday. They do have a jar set up. Anything you put in the jar, the children are giving that towards missions. Okay? Now, we, we have our tithes and offerings this morning. But anything that you'd like to drop in extra out there, that they're going to give towards missions. 
Let us pray together over this offering. Lord, we love you, Jesus. God, we thank you for every blessing. We thank you, God, for the spirit that you have allowed to fall in this house today. We ask, God, that you strengthen every hand, Lord, that is with you. God, that you give us strength to move forward, Lord, in your grace and in your truth. We ask, Lord, that you bless those that are today that have to give. Those that do not, Lord, we ask, God, that you help them, Lord, to have the faith to be obedient to Scripture. We ask, Lord, that you keep us safe as we go our separate ways. And we ask all of this, Jesus, in your wonderful name. God bless you. God bless you. Remember also, if you'd like groceries that we, we have left over today, please get with one of the sisters that work in the food pantry, and let's get that taken care of.